presidential candidate and Manila Mayor Isko Moreno says he would rather turn to renewable energy and natural gas as alternative power sources instead of nuclear power. Moreno rejects the revival of the Bataan nuclear power plant as his campaign starts in Bataan on Wednesday, March 2. Maraming source of energy, maraming way, uh, renewable, uh, gas, uh, or coal. Hanggat merong teknolohiya at itong mga teknolohiya na to na available na mas less, I'm not saying it's not harmful, but less na masamang epekto sa kapaligiran, yun muna ang paprioridad ko. In contrast, presidential race frontrunner Ferdinand Marcos Jr. expressed openness to reviving the Bataan nuclear power plant built during the regime of his father, the late dictator Ferdinand Marcos. Last January, Marcos claimed in a DZRH interview the closure of the plant was due to politics and not safety concerns. Meanwhile, tricycle driver Ronald Carrigo meets his candidate, Vice President Lenny Robredo, after he went viral for an eloquent four-minute monologue on why Robredo should become the next Philippine president. Carrigo's heartfelt endorsement stands out amid perceptions that Robredo is weak in Metro Manila, where the top contender, Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos, leads by a wide margin. Robredo's grassroots movement is strong among the well-educated middle class, but is tepid among the urban poor like Mang Ronald. Veteran journalist John Neri notes the tricycle driver had given a master class in persuasion without even trying. Starstruck, Mang Ronald was at a loss for words. It was his daughter who ended up talking to Robredo. When Robredo left the venue, his daughter helped wipe the happy tears away. The vice president later tweeted that meeting Mang Ronald was the highlight of her day. Family members of Lumad rights activist and volunteer teacher Chad Book see his lifeless body for the first time Tuesday, March 1, in Davao de Oro province. Nikki, Chad's sibling, says their father is bent on taking Chad's body for autopsy in Cebu City, where the Books live, and press charges if the results prove foul play. Chad was among five members of a group killed in what the military claimed was a clash between soldiers and New People's Army rebels in Davao de Oro last February 24. Davao de Oro Governor J.V. Tyrone Uy corroborated the military claims that there was an encounter between soldiers and rebels in New Bataan town that day. But Chad's relatives and Save Our Schools Network reject the military's allegations. SOS Network earlier said Books Group was sent to do research in areas where Lumad schools will likely be reopened. Nikki says her family resents that Book is being red-tagged even in death. She says the National Task Force to End Local Armed Conflict was vilifying her brother even before he was killed. Need more context, clarity, and perspective? Get the full picture with Rappler Plus. With exclusive content and events, you'll get an opportunity to discuss issues with reporters, experts, and featured guests while helping Rappler continue its fearless journalism. Join now. Alphabet Inc.'s Google confirms Tuesday, March 1, it removed Russian state-funded publishers such as RT from its news-related features, including the Google News search tool. This following Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the various sanctions against Russia. Google's President of Global Affairs, Kent Walker, said in this extraordinary crisis, we are taking extraordinary measures to stop the spread of misinformation and disrupt disinformation campaigns online. Google already restricted news companies funded by the Russian government such as RT, Russia24, TASS, RIA, Novosti from advertising tools and some features on YouTube. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky gives an interview Tuesday, March 1, in a nondescript administrative office in the historic city of Kiev, with sandbags blocking the bottom of the windows and the blinds pulled down. The interview shows the president at war. Unshaven and tired, the 44-year-old leader makes an impassioned plea to the international community to do more to support Ukraine. 
When asked how long his country will hold out, Zelensky replies, We do not hold out, we fight, and our nation will fight to the end. This is our home. We are protecting our land, our homes, for the sake of our children's future. Meantime, U.S. President Joe Biden leads Democratic and Republican lawmakers in a rare display of unity in his State of the Union address Tuesday, March 1. Let each of us, if you're able to stand, stand and send an unmistakable signal to the world of Ukraine. Lawmakers who are deeply divided over taxes, voting rights, and gun safety stand together to applaud Ukraine. Many are waving Ukrainian flags and cheering in the chamber of the House of Representatives. Several women members of Congress wore the flag's colors of yellow and blue. In a deviation from his prepared remarks, Biden assails Russian President Vladimir Putin. He has no idea what's coming. He thought he could roll into Ukraine and the world would roll over. Instead, he met with a wall of strength he never anticipated or imagined. He met the Ukrainian people. The President Zelensky, to, their, to every Ukrainian, their fearlessness, their courage, their determination literally inspires the world. Hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians have been fleeing the fighting since Putin ordered a full-scale invasion nearly a week ago. A miles-long Russian military convoy north of Kyiv is readying to advance on the capital. Chris Aquino publicly shares the latest update on her health via Instagram, saying she was able to receive a new treatment. Chris adds she is scheduled for a second shot on March 13. She plans to continue treatment for her autoimmune disease and other health problems abroad. Aquino updates her followers that she currently weighs 38.5 kilos. Chris first revealed in 2018 that she was diagnosed with chronic spontaneous urticaria, an autoimmune disease that causes hives and in serious cases can lead to anaphylaxis or a severe allergic reaction. In other news, the Kissing Booth star Joey King is engaged to her boyfriend Stephen Piet after more than two years of dating. The 22-year-old actress announced her engagement on Instagram, revealing that the proposal happened last February 22. Joey and Steven went public with their relationship in 2019 after working together on series The Act. In other news, Hollywood actor-director Sean Penn found himself among thousands of refugees fleeing to Poland on foot days after visiting Ukraine's capital Kyiv to film scenes for his documentary on Russia's invasion. Penn posted a photo on Twitter on Monday, February 28, showing his journey. A spokesperson in Los Angeles, Meyer Boxbaum, told Reuters by email on Tuesday, March 1, that Penn had made it out of Ukraine safely. <music>